We begin with Governor Gina Raimondo's final State of the State address to the people of Rhode Island. Good evening, I'm Shannon Heggie. I'm Mike Montecalvo. The governor says she's forever grateful for the trust Rhode Islanders have placed in her over the last 10 years as general treasurer and governor. This address coming on the same day the U.S. Senate Commerce Committee approved her nomination to become a member of President Joe Biden's cabinet. We have team coverage for you tonight. 12 News Politics Editor Ted Nisi and political analyst Joe Fleming break down what we heard tonight. But first, let's send it over to Kim Kalunian live at the State House. Kim? Well, Mike and Shannon, the governor began her speech tonight by calling 2020 a year of heartbreak and struggle. And she took the time to recognize the close to 2,200 Rhode Island families who lost a loved one due to COVID-19. And while she painted a brighter picture for Rhode Island's future, she left herself outside of the frame. 2021 will be our year of rebuilding. Governor Gina Raimondo setting a tone of hope and resilience for the year ahead, a year where she plans to end her second term nearly two years early and pass the baton to a new leader. And I know that Lieutenant Governor McKee is going to be ready for this job on day one. Raimondo also reflecting on her past six years in office, listing job creation, infrastructure improvements, and upgrades to the state's schools among her top accomplishments. But in the Republican response, State Senator Jessica De La Cruz said there's more work to be done, particularly in the area of education. We can no longer allow a child's zip code or a family's wealth to determine the quality of their education. So I say to you tonight, Rhode Island, we must stop failing our schools. Now is the time for decisive action. Inside what would normally be a packed House chamber, just the first family, two staff members, and the Senate president and House speaker. It was vintage Gina Raimondo. It was her very optimistic, very positive, very much of the state that she loves. As the state's first female governor prepares to end her time as Rhode Island's chief executive, calling it a bittersweet moment, Raimondo closed with this message to young girls watching it home. The world needs you. And I am sure looking forward to the day that one of you is the governor of this great state. The question that remains now, will Raimondo remain the governor for the next two days or the next two weeks as she awaits the full Senate's vote on her confirmation? Live at the State House, I'm Kim Kalunian, 12 News. And our State of the State coverage continues now with 12 News Politics Editor Ted Nisi. You know, Ted, we were talking when we were watching this speech live, and I thought one of the most striking sections was towards the end when the governor talked about when she was offered the job by President Joe Biden uh, and how she didn't exactly say yes right away. It came down to a conversation with her daughter, Cece, and with some other women in her life. Uh, talk to us about that part of the speech. Yeah, Shannon, it struck me as I remarked to you while we were watching, I, I can confirm that report wasn't made up tonight for the speech or anything because one of her senior advisors said to me right after the governor was announced by President Biden, he said, you know, Ted, she, was, she is nervous about this, you know, for someone who's a fairly confident person. And he said what had really helped push her over the top to take the job was a conversation with Cece, who I was told basically said to her mother, look, mom, you always say women and girls have to step up, take these leadership positions to show, you know, women can hold all the same jobs as men, so you have to do it. And obviously a lot more went to the, into the decision than just that. But that conversation being that high in the speech clearly resonated with the governor. And she carried that theme throughout the end of her speech, really speaking to the young girls in Rhode Island who have watched her uh, as governor. Uh, speaking of that, though, we don't really know how much longer she will be governor. Um, it's really all up to Senate leaders in Washington at this point, right? Yeah, Shannon, there's, it, there's just such uncertainty. As we've been reporting all day, the Senate Commerce Committee voted to approve her nomination this morning, and that is a very important step forward. But she still needs the full Senate it to schedule and hold a vote for her to actually take office as Commerce Secretary. Some on her team are still hoping that could happen as soon as Friday, but if it doesn't, she and Rhode Island could be in limbo for a while because on Monday the Senate's supposed to start former President Trump's impeachment trial. Then senators are supposed to take a one-week break partway through the month. That could push her confirmation vote all the way to the week of February 22nd. Again, I'm not predicting that. It's just so hard to say, but that is on the table. And I think, Shannon, if it goes on that long and she's still Rhode Island's governor, her through most of February. I think she and her team are going to be under a lot more pressure for her either to be more public than she's been so far or resign because people will go and want to hear from her about the vaccine rollout. Right, because to remind our viewers, she has not been speaking to the press, appearing at any of the COVID
with briefings. We haven't asked her a question since before Christmas at this point. Right. So for that to continue for that much longer, you can't imagine. It seems untenable. But again, their hope is it, it's all over quickly and Dan McKee's in place. But it, it's up to the Senate now. All right. Politics editor Ted Nisi, always good to have your insights. Thanks for being with us. Thanks, Shannon. Our in-depth coverage continues now with 12 News political analyst Joe Fleming talking about Gina Raimondo's legacy. Joe tells me part of her legacy, how she handled the pandemic, especially in the beginning, reassuring people everything was going to be okay. Also, the first female governor in the state of Rhode Island, a governor who worked for jobs, education, and innovation. But Fleming says Raimondo did leave out some of the challenges she faced in her six years on Smith Hill. Losing the poor socks was a big blow. Uh, the U hip was a really bad problem that she had to deal with for over a year. Uh, people are really not getting checks or getting their food stamps. That really was a, a shot at her, and the DCYF was also another shot of her weakness. So I think those are three things. Obviously, she's not going to talk about her weaknesses, but she could have addressed those in some way, saying we had some problems, we didn't succeed everywhere, but we tried and we try to fix them the best we can. Fleming says it's going to take years, a number of years, before we see the results of Raimondo's accomplishments and shortcomings to truly determine her legacy.